house and you know, and they take pictures and this and that, but they never, he never would let them go into it. Did you show that picture to Guy? No, I showed it to a lot of people, but I don't think Guy got a glimpse of it. He's been a busy man lately, that's all. Oh, I guess so. You know, I never have seen him on the day that we was up there when they first kind of dedicated the thing, you know, and they had people all in. He said, oh, and I prayed for me that day. They said it was him. And then they put fish in. They caught some pretty good fish out of there. When did he dig the pond? Well, he had the bulldozer out fishing. Then he dug one out just across the fence over on the other five acres of Mom's estate. But it's all grown up, hasn't it, in trees and things now since we left there. Because when I went along there, I couldn't even see any water out there. That's over the fence now on the north side. North side. What about the pond that's just directly mm -hmm. south of the mountain? I almost dug that. You know about when that was? That is in 19 and that's about 19 and 41 or two, something along there. See, we first lived on the creek. Mm -hmm. And the creek got up so big. We lived there 11 years before the creek got up and run us out. And then we had the moving outfit to come out and they moved us up on the hill. We bought, er, bought that from the Weevil children. That was Annie Blackbird's allotment there for the mound. Well, she died, and she, you know, she died in 34. Well, we went over there then, and, and when we seen we was going to have to leave down there on the creek, we just moved our house and our store and everything. Everything was just moved up. Just didn't have to unpack mm -hmm. nothing or anything. Just left it all on the road. And by night, we was up on the hill with our store and our house and everything. You had the house and the store in there? House and store and that old toilet out there. Same old thing, I know it's just standing there the other day. And I was there. <laughs> that is all what we had moved up there. Did, did anybody ever, or did you ever hear about the water getting that high before? Yes, we high? heard of it. We didn't believe it much. Oh. We, we know it got high, but we didn't much think it. But oh, it got, uh, it sloshed in at the back of the store door, and it got in on my porch, oh. porches, you know. We had a little dog, a little dog got up in the swing, we could see him. And we thought, well, we'd go across the creek over to Arthur Baker's and stay with them, you know, because the, the creek was so big and we was afraid that it was going to get worse. Trees was coming down and everything. Well, the part of the bridge went out while we was over to Arthur Baker's. We couldn't get back over, to, and the little creek that went out over there, there we was, couldn't even get back to our store. Was there another bridge over... Yeah, over on Little Lee, and there's now, you know, yeah. Little Lee's Creek. Well, you see, people well, you could go out. We, we was in between the little and the big, yeah. you see, when we was over to Arthur Baker's. He lived there where he lives now. We had some terrible times there, I can tell you, with the water and with everything else. <laughs> Way back when we first went there. <laughs> when did you first uh, move the store up by the creek? Well, we moved up. Uh, we put the store up over there in... 33 or 34, something along there, you know, when we first, we tore down, they had, they, they sold it to the highest bidder at Long, the old church house and school house I went to school in. This long building, kind of like the old store building. Well, Moses bought it to the high, it sold to the highest bidder and he gave $25 for it. <laughs> well, no money, that in depression times. Way back then. So we t they tore it down and moved it over there and put it up, and they they camped over there on the creek bank, you know. And one of my girls was towing me, and her and my girl from over went over there and cooked for them a lot. I had a skillet and lid and uh, the old time things to cook in all on the outside, you know. So they had kind of a picnic of cooking for them while they was building the store. <clears throat> and I stayed at Long. I was going to stay at Long the children got out of school. Mosey got to drinking over there, and I had to go over there. I had to fight around then with him. How long he did got it? straightened out. 
How long did it take them to tear the old school down? And well, it didn't take very it? long. They commenced, I believe it was in uh, the 9th of June. Mose, I heard him say, is the 9th of June, and we moved the 4th of July. Or he did, moved on over and went to selling his stuff out. Oh, that was a picnic on that creek bank every Sunday. We'd go over there on weekends. The people gathered there. They were so proud. There was a store there, you know. And they had to walk and go to what's night up now. It was brilliant that day. It used to be brilliant when that was. In short, it used to be Shakespeare. So there wasn't any other store in short at the time? Well, there was some... Man, they had a little store, but he didn't keep anything much they needed, you know. Of course, they could get matches and a few things, but, you know, not enough to end the mouth much. Mr. Jeremiah had a store there. He just kept just a little stuff. Well, we kept a pretty good little supply of everything, you know, that people needed. And the groceries and a little hardware. Dry goods, I'd have cheap dry goods for them. So that's dry goods. But there wasn't no money them days. People would work for 50 cents a day from sun to sun. What kind of work? Hoe and corn and cotton. Around. Corn and cotton. Drafts is on, couldn't read nothing of it. Oh, that was church time. You all know about the drought, I guess. Where did you live at during that time? Uh, I mean, the <clears throat> Depression days. I wasn't even here yet. Oh, you wasn't? <laughs> You was born after that. Well, you missed uh, some pretty hard times. And we just barely got by with the deal. Everybody's in the same boat. They didn't nobody have anything. Did you have to give people things on credit? Or did yes, you do that kind everybody traded on credit. And uh, got beat out of a lot. <clears throat> then the WPA come along, you know, and that helped out. They got to getting WPA checks. And what year was that? No, that was in the 30s. It was in 31 and well, from 29 on, I'd say, you know, it was that terrible time. It was a terrible, terrible time. Why did you move the store into that area? Well, Longtown was over there and it went plumb out. There wasn't nothing over there worth anything. And we had this store, you know, and everything, store stuff. So Moe's decided that we'd just go to shore. Did you know? He thought that but there's lots of timber work, you know, like uh, making stay boats and ties. So he thought, you know, that that would be worth a lot to go over there and get that trade. Shannon Blaylock's die cut, and Shannon's doing pretty good with it. What you call pretty good now, you wouldn't think of anything, no. Had either of you been storekeepers before that time? Yes, my dad was storekeeper at Long for 21 years. I worked in the store for him before I was ever married. Yes, he's uh, W.M. Howell was my dad's name. William Noah signed it W.M. And boy, he had a store. He had everything. That is. That is a way back to see him. In 1905, on. I think he put, he came mm -hmm. in the store in 1905, um, and mm -hmm. then he's in the store on um, about, I think it's 21 years he stayed in there. He farmed and was in the store too for a while. See, well, us children all had the land, and we tried to see after all that. We was all on the road, Cherokee Road, you know, oh. we got land. You look like you Indian. might be some kind of an Indian, are you? No, I'm not. People but, ask me, but I'm not. Well, I thought but you had a little bit Indian. of a dark skin, you yeah. know. <coughs> Where were you at Lottie's Land? My allotment was between uh, Mulder and Long. In the Minnow Springs, have you found out where that was? That's my allotment. And Moses was back up here on the mountain. His land wasn't worth anything much, but mine was good land at that time. Me and my sister's land was both down there. Then my mother's land was in the river bottom. Arkansas? River bottom? 
What was Moses? What mountain was Moses in? Up here on top of this mountain. You come, you come, you come down that mountain. Well, he's just. You, there's one road went right on back up the mountain. You know, but well, Moses' place is right over the right of that, and it comes from on down there to that road there. He just had a road. I don't know why he didn't get any more land. Because we had 160. Was it your dad that was? No, it was my mother. My mother was Indian. Oh, what's your name? What's your name? She was Mary Allison was her name before she married him. If she was part Cherokee Indian, they lived, uh, see, my grandmother had come from Georgia. And uh, Granny Allison, she's, let's see, her name was, uh, I I've got to probably forget things. I'm getting old, I guess. <laughs> I forget things. Franklin, she was Franklin. Granny Allison was our Indian part of the family. And uh, I think that uh, Benjamin Franklin, she was related to Benjamin Franklin in some way. Uh, Bill's kind of got the history of Bill Paris. He keeps the uh, records back on all of it, you know. And he, and he traced it back, kind of like that. But my daddy, he was a white man. He lived in Arkansas about Uniontown. You know where Uniontown's at over the other side of the shore. Well, my mother lived down to Mouth River now, back down there. And uh, he'd come over there and courted her, and they, they married. But uh, before he could marry her, he, he had to get relief from five Indian chiefs before he'd come over there and marry her. I've heard him tell it, you know. But he, he did. He, he dragged it a little. He didn't know just whether they'd sign for him or not. See, they're trying to keep the white men from coming in and marrying him with so many and trying to keep that down. But they did. They signed the papers for him. He said they all treated him pretty nice. It's all full of bloods. Mm -hmm. And I remember three of the names, but there's two of the names that I, I should have wrote them down, and two of them I forgot. Mm -hmm. So your mother grew up at the mouth of Weber? Uh huh. Mm -hmm. Yeah, her father died when she was eight years old, and she come up to, well, over there on the road. It's uh, hard by the, it's by that Seaboard graveyard. She come there and stayed with some, some full blood Indians named uh, Seaboard, and she went to school. My grandma brought her up there and left her there. I've got an old trunk that she put her clothes in, you know. So your mother stayed with. Ain't Nancy Seabold, we called her, and Uncle Joe. Nancy and Joe Seabold, uh -huh. they were full bloods. Where was their house at? It was, uh, well, when you come around to that graveyard and come on down and start down that hill where you get right in there, there's no house there now. But then it was a great big double log house and had a chimney down here and up there too, you know, built where you have it. Oh, no, my mother said it was a, a nice log house, the Indians built. That would be west of the Seabolt Cemetery? Yes, kind of west there. Right in there after you leave the cemetery, not too far on the little ridge there. You can see a house way back up there, you know, when you turn to come back down to go across the little creek bridge. Is it, it's on the ridge before you go down? Uh-huh, it's little right creek there. Bottom. Where that house you can see back up in there is down on the road down there more. I remember where exactly the old house stood there. Not been many years ago, it burned down. That was a, was that an inn? Did they have an inn there, or? Well, uh, Claude says that it was kind of a stagecoach run through there. Oh. And that was, uh, he told you about, you know, that day. He, he remembers quite a lot that he shared us tell, you know, in time. And I used to remember quite a lot. My mother told me about when they come up from the mouth of the river, coming on, moved up there, you know. They knew this was coming, that we'd all get land. And they was trying to get where he wanted to locate us, the land he wanted us to get, you know. This was your... And she said there wasn't yeah. no roads. They come a trail all the way up to Lawrence of Long, there's where they settled. And there was no houses nowhere, she said, on just a little old house once in a while. And just the Indians is all there was there. And she said when they got to their place where they was going to stop, why, just one great big log room with a great big chimney. 
and they had an iron cross to hang pots and things on to cook there, but she had a cook stove. She did live down at the mouth of Weber for a while after they married. She had a cook stove. They'd got grand beer, and I don't know a few things. But she said they went in there, and she thought, oh, this is such a desperate place. And said that night, there's a great big bunch of turkeys come up, creeping up, you know, and flew up in a tree out behind their house and roosted there. And said they'd done that for a long time until the white men began to get so thick. Oh, I've heard her tell that, and she said they just come trails when they was coming up there. And the most wild game, said the, the quails and the rabbits and the squirrels and the deer. Now that was in 1894, so that was just before I was born. They moved up there in April and I was born in May, and I had two sisters older than me. And she said them, they'd be playing, my little sisters were out in the yard, I was a little baby. Said they'd come in and say, Ma, there's two men out in the chimney corner. And so she, they she said she would uh, go out. She wouldn't play that. She knew it was in. She said she'd go out and she'd say, Do so doodly, what you want, you man, turkey. They'd tell her, Yisa, something like that. She'd say, Sailor Yisa, it was me, or Yisa's flower. Well, she said she'd give them, they'd go on. Oh, when we first Weber. moved short, there was lots of Indians over there then in Fort Blades. Not there now, though. I just think of so many that would sit around the store and they'd talk about Cherokee that you couldn't hear nothing. This is that long or? That short long? then. There wasn't as many long as it was short. I mean, the, where they were living in the, where you were living in the, in the log house and the people would stand outside. But when we had our store, it, after we moved short and had our store where the Indians, they wouldn't come in the yeah, dark. Same thing. You know, they'd just stand up. It's like them men standing. Most of she hadn't went out. Them men stood there all day long. That chimney mm -hmm. She said they'd go on then. After she'd go out and give them what they wanted, they'd go on. Of course, this was a little wild then, you know, that's way back there. So in 1894? Yeah, 1894, they was. Did your parents lived at the mouth of Weber? They did, yes, and they moved out of there because the floods was coming down there, you know, and then oh. he wanted to get us in on this land. See, the road was called 19-2, mm -hmm. and then he wanted to get us all on the road and get our land allotted, you know. I can remember when he was doing all that. See, I was 19-2, uh, and I was born 94. I was a pretty good size of a girl. So I can remember when he'd go to the Dawes Commission, you know, and they was going to draw the strip payment, and well, he said he didn't know whether I'd grow or not. I was just three months old. He went to the Dawes Commission, and they said, yes, I grow as much as I still. So he got for me, and he said, okay, and my mother. That's where he got his start, Then he always had plenty of that. We never did bump for anything. My dad was a worker, managed, you know, and with all of our land and everything, and what money we draw. We had to draw $1,200 at that time. Now, that was a lot of money them days. Well, what? See, that was a strip, that was first payment to the Indians, that was a strip payment. And we brought about $300 to the head. Plus your land. Well, we didn't yet have the land when we brought that. Before. No, the land came a little later then. See, the white people was coming in, the settlers, they'd just come in and you pinch them up a big field out there with the rails and it was theirs. That's all it was to it them days, you know. Were there many settlers, white settlers, up by the Yes, they, they were just coming in like years. everything, yeah. They was, and the man, that the land that he allotted to me, I know, I remember the man that lived on it was Lewis Keister. And uh, Paul went down there and told him, he said, well, Lewis, my little girl has got this land, and he, this man had built a log house there and a log barn, and, oh, he just, and fenced with rails, that's the way the fence down the water. And he was just awful hurt about it. And uh, Paul told him, he says, Well, Lewis, I'm sorry for you. I know that you you thought you had this, but you know that these Indians has come in, they're going to take this land from these white people. But he says, I'll give you $200 for what you've done here. He says, I don't have to give you anything. But he did to give him $200. I've read my father tell it lots of times. And he says, you can stay here just as long as you want to, and I'll rent you the post. 
So that's what he done. He stayed there 12 years. Then I, when I married, I moved on it. <laughs> Lived there 15 years. So where did then you, I sold it. Where did you grow up then? Well, I grew up at Long then. As long as where I grew up and married and everything myself. And then I moved out, me and Mose moved out on my place. Oh, yeah. So his place was the poor up there, and mine was a good place. Is that place still uh, in existence? The oh, yeah. Log cabin house? Well, the log, yeah, the, the house that my father, or the log house was. Yes, it's in existence. They've got a pretty good house built. Yeah. And when you top the mountain, you know, uh, coming from over there, we call it the Frank Duncan Hill, that's a little steep hill. Well, now, where we first settled at, when they first settled at, was, is right on west of that, across that field there, back over in there. And uh, the last time I was over there, they had a pretty good house there. Well, my dad wound up with a pretty good house there before we moved from there to Long. We moved to Long in 1907, <laughs> I believe, about the time statehood was coming in. I remember when oh. Oklahoma, when the territory first went over to Oklahoma. You were, you would have been just three then. No, I was uh, born in 94, and that oh, we come in Oklahoma in 19 and 7, you know. Come over into the 19th century. I'd been about, let's see, uh, seven. I was 10 or 11 year old. See, 94. In uh, 1900, I'd have been uh, six, wouldn't I? Yeah. And 1907, I'd have been older than that. But I remember that real well. I remember when old uh, C.N. Haskell, he run, he's our first governor, you know. Of Oklahoma when the territory went in Oklahoma. It's always long IT. Well, we had to go to Putnam, Oklahoma, you know, and there we. What did the uh, Indian folks you know, think about staying well, there? They didn't like it, but they was, a lot of people that took over then. Yeah. A lot of them, like myself, that wasn't, uh, now, full bloods couldn't sell their land. They made them keep it. A lot of them did do it, but it wasn't easy. They took it away from them, too, some of them did. But like we was, my dad put us down, I think, really less than what we was. He didn't want us to get under the agent or nothing like that, you know. Yeah. So they could sell their land and they sold it. A lot of people bought it. A lot of Who were some of the other folks uh, living at the mouth of Weber when you... Well, uh, when they lived down at the mouth of Weber, why, uh, her and him, why, there's another, there's two more couples I've heard her talk about of, of white people that live there, but there's all just real friends. Their name was Fears. And then there's a, the King, a Bob King's family, and a Fears family that was old settlers, you know, that was there. How do you spell the King? K I N G, King, King. Bob King, and uh, then the uh, Fears is the still some of the Fears is over there, you know. Let's see, I believe his name was Bill Fears mm -hmm. and Bob King. They was two families that lived by the mouth of Weber. There weren't too many down in there then. Were there other Indian folks around? Yeah, there's Indian families here and there around. Because I heard her say that uh, Granny always liked to be with the Indians. She taught oh. Cherokee. You know. Yeah, they was plumb on up to where you always have there. They the family now. George Stites, have you been over there? He's he was old during that time. The Indian family lived in that old log house. Yep. Then up there above uh, Junior or Junior Jeremiah's got that old log house. Now all of them there was people. I've heard my dad tell about uh, Mr. Duncan, the one that had the grave there. He got ground, you know, in his crew. And he said he remembered that as well as today because he says, I was 16 year old when Mr. Duncan got drowned in Lee Street. Because they come through Union Town with his casket, they went to Van Buren in a wagon and got his casket and brought out there. And he said that he remembered seeing and they said, well, that's Mr. Duncan. He's got grounded over there at the, mm -hmm. up there at the Duncan Forge. They call it the Duncan Ford up above. The bridge, you know, that's the Duncan Ford. Well, that's where he got down. The creek was up B, and I heard Paul tell it. He said that he was uh, 
his wife went across first on a horse, a gentle horse, but he had kind of a wild horse. So she told him, says, you better not go across on that horse because you might get killed. And he said, well, he could go in where his boy could, you know, his boy drove across. So he went and let, he just lunged in and let his last hand broke his neck and the horse's neck too. That's Mr. Duncan now. That, That's as it's first? been told to me now. Did they ever say what his first name was? Let's see. What, this is on his tombstone. You, you didn't see his tombstone? No. They took clothes over there that day when they moved him out. Seemed like it was John Duncan. I ain't very right sure. Was he a uh, white or Indian? He was three quarters Indian, they said. Do you remember when he was buried there? I think he was buried there in about 51 or something. No, I believe it was. I've seen, looked at that old tombstone, but they paid very much attention to it either. But the, See, then there's Allison Graveyard. My grandpa, he was a white man. He was captain of the Civil War. He's buried down at the Allison Graveyard. The first one that's buried there is one of his little children, I think, and it's named it Allison Graveyard. Mm -hmm. And it goes by here. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, You've seen his grave. Yeah, I have. Um, getting back to Duncan, I'd like to hear about it, Captain Allison, too, but since we're talking about John Duncan, you know, uh, did you ever hear about when that cabin was built? Cabin? Oh, yes, that was built. I believe they said that was built before the George Stikes. Oh, man, uh, Leela's uh, dad. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They, see, they were Shaken Bush. Yeah. Her name was Shaken Bush. Leela and Aki Shaken Bush. I remember seeing them there and there. So <laughs> Aki was my age, and Leela was my sister Lillian's age. So did Duncan build that cabin, or did he have somebody who was there? Well, he had Indians helping. Yeah. So he was responsible for building uh -huh. it. He, yes, he's one of his. He's uh his -huh. own. He built it there. Uh -huh. And he fenced that little old, up there. Miss Phelps told me this now. She says that he fenced that. He owned it because he fenced it, you know, before they rolled his car. Did of course, he, he died before the roll was ever called. He didn't get no land. Uh -huh. just what he fenced. Just what he fenced is what he was using? That's what my grandmother, she didn't live till the road was called. She didn't get no land. See, she would have, she could have lived till they lotted it out. But she didn't live till they lotted it out. You know, John Duncan, was, it, was he a farmer or was he hunting? Mm -hmm. Well, he was, he farmed a little. Uh -huh. And now Miss Phelps told me that. She, and she said there's more graves mm -hmm. on that hill than just his. She says now because, she says, I picked cotton out here on this where you all got your tents and everything, that little clean piece of ground. Miss Phelps told me that, and she says, I picked cotton out there, and says, and I've seen the graves out there. So there's more on top of the hill than his. But they gradually got leveled off. Well, I guess you all found bones and everything. But Pudgy at that time, they dug this little piece right. in there, and they found some little bones. Yeah. Well, did Duncan run a... We had heard somewhere that he had run a steam cotton gin. I don't, I don't know. It seems like I've heard that since you mentioned it, too. Up there, above Junior's. Yeah, up there where that, uh, there used to be an awful good spring up there, well, or something. And there was down below Junior's, too. I mean, mm -hmm. used to, the road used to go through there and we'd stop there and get water. Who was he married to? Who Did you ever hear that? He was Duncan's wife? Well, I don't know. My father just said his wife tried to get him not to mm -hmm. go into the water, you know. Yeah. I don't know who she was. Or it wasn't personally, I don't reckon, acquainted with her. You know, is there children? Well, there, his granddaughter was the one that come out to the store. That's the only one I ever seen in know of. And she was the one who told me, she said, if you ever let anybody go into this mound, you let us know. We live over Telequa, she says. And she was getting kind of old then. She said, we have old Telequa, and we won't take his body up and move it over there if they go into that mound. And we told her, I got her address, and I had to get no money saved. Yeah. And I said, if we ever do go into it, I'll sure let you know. But uh, Mose never would let nobody go into it. He said, they won't molest that old man up there in the hill. 
You mentioned that before. Bessie and Carrie, are those your sisters? Uh -huh. Bessie and Carrie was my mm. older sisters than me and then my sister Lydia. And mm -hmm. I have a brother Frank living. Me and my brother Frank, all of our family was six girls and one boy in our family. Mm -hmm. and me and Frank are the only ones living now. He's over the Tulsa. Who were the other <clears throat> sisters besides Bessie and Carrie and then Lillian? There's Bessie and Carrie and then me and then my sister Lillian and Hazel. She died in 1921 and there's Carrie, she died in 1920. She died the year of the flu, you know, when everybody's dying with that terrible flu we had in 1919. Oh. That's when she died, left her husband, two children, three children. Did that, <clears throat> did she marry somebody from? Married Joe Montgomery. That was Carrie's husband. And Bessie, she married to Elburn Woody. And they were ten children. But my sister Carrie just had three. Or he is, she's wearing that. That's a Mose Weevil? Mm hmm. That's his mother that that land where you're at up there was allotted to that we had. We got it from the children. What was his mother's name? His mother's name was Annie. Albert was his father, Albert Weevil. Was she the one that uh, was allotted the land, Manny? Mm -hmm. She was full of that land. Was she a blackbird? Yes, she was a blackbird. She married Albert Weevil and had these children. They were all kind of small. She died the year we moved over there. Mm -hmm. I never did get acquainted with her. So you bought the land from? From her, her children, children. From her children, where we got this land. From Moe's and... Rose and Margaret and Luke and Luella and the whole bunch of Is Luke still alive? No, Luke died here not long ago. I saw his name in the mailbox too. Mm -hmm. Luke and Levi lived down there. I think it, uh, Lynn kept house for him, I say. And then Luke, he died and left Levi. Margaret, their sister, she lives up in Oklahoma. He went up there, and then this Mose and his wife was in California, but they come back, so they told me, and they took over. They're just staying there now, keeping Levi. Mm -hmm. See, Levi's got his mind arranged a little when he's in the army. You see Levi, don't you? Okay. We thought a lot of the children, and all of them, Tried to help them out when they was. Well, H, our H, our youngest boy, took Albert Weevil to the hospital when he, he never did come back home. And they stopped out in front of the store. And, oh, he was sick. And he told me to come out there, and I went out there. And he said, and there was, he didn't, they didn't have no mother, you see, and he'd have to go off and leave them children. And uh, Luella was sick. And he asked me if I'd go down there and see about the children. I never will forget how he looked. He looks pitiful, you know. Hate me leave them children. Well, he said Luella was sick, and I went down there, and she had a hard chill on her. And I went back to the store and got some chill tonic and sent it down there. I told him, I said, Noel, but I said, don't worry, I'll see after the children, see if they don't suffer or anything. And I never see Albert Weevil no more. He went and died, left that bunch of children. What did he die of? I don't hardly know. 
But I, I still can see his face as he looked at me. And Annie had already died? Before? Oh, yes, she done died, you see. We've had two families that we kind of helped take care of that like we did them. We just kind of helped them, you know, if they wanted anything at the store, they got it. If they had the money or if they didn't have the money. But they always managed later. They did, you know, and they paid for it. They wasn't, uh, they weren't bad to just get things not to pay for them, but they just didn't have it right then, maybe. But later, you see, like, Luke brought a check and they all got doing pretty well. But there was a time when they was really up against it. When we lived at uh, Mineral Springs, why, we had the Labasque children, and their father and mother both died. And that man asked me to see after them children. Well, there's two of them that just stayed at my house nearly all the time, the little ones. I always seen after them, and you know till today why we get letters from them. They call us our, their second parents. And they just seemed to think the word of us. I said, we didn't do that much. You all didn't. Know. Oh, yes, you did. Just being kind to us. They really did appreciate it. And I think the Weaver children did, too. That's two families that I really thought I helped, tried to. I always felt sorry for orphan children. They have father and mother and nobody to help them out. What had happened to Annie? She died with having a baby. The child died too. That's what they said is we had just getting moved over there when she was having all this trouble and died. And they said that the child was. Was there a doctor there? No. With her? No. They just uh, just kept on thinking, I guess. That, I guess they had maybe a doctor, but uh, maybe it was Doc Blue, I don't know. There was an old doctor named Doc Blue that helped him out a lot around people like that. You know. Did he ever live um, just up by Jeremiah's? Mm -hmm. Jeremiah's yeah, place? he lived all over the place over there. Oh. <laughs> he moved around quite a bit. He lived up there in the snake country up there about Kurt Sanger's too. Those snakes are so bad. Is he a good doctor? Well, he done very well. You know... They talked about trying to prosecute him or something a few times that he wouldn't have the right to be, you know, but he'd always, he had a certificate of some kind, I reckon, and he always got by. Did that? He boiled down things and made his own medicine out of some. Did the Indian folks use the doctors too? Yeah, they used the doctors too, but they didn't have no money or nothing they'd get him. Like back in the thirties when you moved up up to shore, did the Indian people have different styles of life than the white folks there? Or well, no, they they had got uh, they all about life. They done pretty good. The only thing that I noticed when we first went there, they were so distant, you know, about the, you know about like I say, standing out or so on. They. They didn't like to come in this backward. But now a lot of them is like that. Moses like that when he was little. I heard his mother say that he wouldn't meet nobody in the road at all. She said, Moses made for a tree to come behind a tree and they was going to meet anybody in the road. And one time he got behind the tree and the man noticed he was behind there, you know, and his stepfather made duck with him to jump at Moses. <laughs> He said he was eight or ten years old then. That man jumped behind that tree at him like scared him to death. <laughs> Most remembers it. You know, just being backward like that more than they are maybe today. But at that time, most people spoke, spoke English. In Cherokee. There's a lot of them spoke Czech when we first went to Charlotte. They were sight. Just to I learned about there. whatever they called everything in store because mm -hmm. <laughs> So what would happen on Sundays? Oh, on Sundays they'd have big ball games there. And most of them play dominoes in the back of the store in that little room back there. You know, it's built on. 
And they'd have big games going back there and in the summer and in the front. We'd all be in there just having a big time. I'd have a big time with them. I'd have done that big store. <laughs> Did women come and hang around too? or hmm? Did women hang around? Oh, too? women's the main ones. Oh, they play dominoes? No, you know, they didn't play dominoes, but we was all in the store. Oh, yeah. Oh, Ruth, she used to talk to me, Ruth Curry, you know, she lives there below y'all. Ruth used to talk to me once in a while. I sure do miss going up to the store and getting me a good old cold soda pop. <laughs> She'd come every evening. There'd be several of them that'd come every evening, you know, and we'd all just sit back and talk and drink pop and have a good time. Of course, we got the customers that come for gas and this Oh, we done pretty good there in the store. We was doing pretty good when we left there. Did you have a gas pump for cars? Yeah, we had two pumps. Oh. At regular and ethyl. I'll show you the, how it looked. I've got some pictures. I'll show you how it looked when we left was there. It don't look like that now. Here and put it in. Oh, it's beautiful. And here's one that I've pieced and quilted. Oh. All by hand. Beautiful. It's turned crossways. This is what they call the flower pot. Did your mother teach you how to do this? Huh? Did your mother teach you how to oh, do this? Oh, she taught me a little. Uh -huh. She taught me a little things, briar stitch, and a few things like that, you know. And uh, this here one is just uh, all over the bed. I just made it out of little pieces all over the bed. But a lot of them think it's pretty because it's, uh, it's scalloped at the sides. And you see, I went around every one. It makes it like a little pillow. <laughs> There's an Indian woman from Calicut here. She looked at them, looked at the stitches and everything. She said, why did you do a good job on them? But here is the one that is not your thing. So this was, this was long, uh -huh. long? Did they call it long town? Uh-huh, long. long. See, uh, it was, uh, there was no long town there when I was born, but uh, when I was four or five years old, there was an old man named Peter Long. And uh, they named it after him. He was a little postmaster there, the first one. Was mm -hmm. the, and they named it Long after Peter Long. Mm -hmm. And I remember this Peter is your Long. father's store, the stubble? No, that is uh, the lodge hall up here after, later on and when I was just a young girl. And then uh, this is my dad's store. You see the porch come out there? Uh -huh. And there's a team of mules in that street somewhere. Let's see. Yes. I don't, you can see yeah. there's an old wagon and a team of mules that are standing out in the streets. They didn't have no cars then. That was made, I think, 1917. Was your uh, dad's store? A oh, he had a big store then. General store? Mm -hmm. General store, hardware, mm -hmm. shoes, dry goods. So you kind of grew up? Grew up with the store business. With the store yes. business? And then my daughter, Lucille, you see, had a store down here. She put in in, in 41. And she just went out there. She ain't been out of here. She ain't been out for five months. Where was that? Where's your daughter's store? Where's yeah, your daughter's you store? see the store down here, Roll? Did y'all come through, Roll? Uh huh. Well, you seen that big store over there, didn't you? Just one big store over there. Missed it. <laughs> well, you went right back. Down here in Roll in the color. And uh, Bob, they put a big sign down there for him. You see, did you see it? You wasn't looking around. I was driving. <laughs> you see, you go back. to be watching the road. Well, when you, in 1917, when your dad had the store in Long, did you ever go up to the, up to the shore or Nike? Yeah, we'd go there to ball games and big singings and things mm -hmm. they'd have over at uh, Nike and Short. Oh, short. We went over there quite a lot, especially at that ball ground right there where we landed later with our store and all. Oh. Yeah. Did they ever uh, dance up on top of the Oh, mound? yeah. We had right there on the mound. We right had, on top? They danced? Yeah, had dancing platform. Oh. Dance for all of those in it. 
And did that, when did that stop, the dancing up there? Oh, they danced for a long time and had the picnic circle. They kind of quit having picnics. Did they have live music? Yeah, girls. And we had a little band when uh, we lived over there. Bill was in it. Bill Parrish was in it. We played a... And then there was um, there was him and George Little John and Omar and Sire Spears, Raymond Woody and a uh, whole bunch of they had a little band. Mm. I forget what they called themselves. They played on the radio so. Mm. They had several different, the fiddles when and the that? guitars and the banjos mm. and ukulele, one of the spirit balls and that ukulele. They had a pretty good little band. Was that when you had the store? Uh-huh, that's when it was on the creek way back in the 30s. Did, uh, did women play musical instruments? Mm-hmm. On the creek. We used to have an Indian woman that played the fiddle for the dances. She's a real good fiddler. She's still living too. Is that, what's her name? Frances, used to be Frances Holt. She's uh, mm-hmm. Frances Woody, I believe she married a Woody. She's dead. She lives over there towards New Hope on that road. She's full of blood Indian. She talks good English. You know. She went to school, as you know. Mm-hmm. Did she, uh, she's older than I am. <clears throat> Did she grow up? <laughs> I kind of like to see her myself. Over by New Hope? Mm-hmm. Francis, I think one of her grandsons lives with her. That's what the Guy Mills told me. You all seen Guy Mills, didn't you? Well, Guy told me Francis lived over there on the road as he went to Guy's. When they were dancing on the mound, uh, what? It's sort of hard to believe they built a platform up there. Did they have? Did they sink posts into it, or how did they do that? No. They, they, they didn't have it. They had the stands and things, you know, and then had the platform where it was leveler. Yeah. yeah wasn't they, up on top of it? I don't think it was right on top. They had something else up there. Mm-hmm. And they had the platform where it was more advanced. Down on the ground, though? Uh-huh. More down, I think. Had you ever heard stories of how that mound was cleared off on the top? We've, we've been told that there used to be a lot more dirt up top. Break it out. Flatten it out. I didn't hear that. Lived that there four years. Right there by me. And then down the creek too. I didn't hear it. I asked Granny Blackbird one time. Oh, Granny Blackbird. She's old. She died. And I said, well, uh, Granny, what, what's in that mound? What somebody had dug in one end of it, you know. you seen where they had. And I said, who was it? And she said, there's Albert Weevil, this Annie on the land, it's her husband. And she said, a Fleetwood boy, dug in. And she said, she said, it was man made mound. I said, yes, I've always heard it was a man made mound. We heard one night, uh, when you had your store there, that one night you woke up, or the next morning, and there's a big hole somebody had dug in the night. Yeah, they dig in there once in a while. Bob decided one time he'd dig into it, you know. He just, <laughs> he dug him a little all over on the... <laughs> there ain't nobody <laughs> dug very long, though, they quit. The biggest hole, I believe, is one I was telling you about that was in the end there. <clears throat> and that was Albert and the Creek Wood. That's the biggest hole that was <clears throat> Now, when Claude and Bert Morton one time, they decided they'd go back a little piece and see what they could find. They come in back on the little part, you know, there was kind of a little mound out below that one. Mm-hmm. What did you find in it? Anything? Uh, they found that it's, uh, it's another mound. You know, it's the well, now, this man told the us that it's over in Choctaw Nation when they're digging every day. He's over there when they are inspecting like you all are, you know, Dr. So. And then he'd come out there and he'd tell us. And he said that uh, that one was made just exactly like this one. said it was the big one, then this little one. And I believe that big old walnut tree was on that little one, wasn't it? This great, great big uh, black walnut tree is standing there. I always yeah, got walnuts. Yeah, the side, the big hackberry was right on top of that one. It was. 
That corner and, was very close to it. That's what I thought, right there by it somewhere. And he said that nowhere in the Choctaw Nation looked just like it. He said it's built just like it. He said now he looked at both up before they started. And uh, Claude and them saved some of this dirt they got and showed it to him. He said just like the soil over there. Mm-hmm. Claude and them would run into something kind of black looking, you know, and it'd be kind of greasy like or something. Mm-hmm. So, uh, the ash, maybe? Might have been. Maybe it's buried bodies and they, mm-hmm. they said it like that. I don't know. That was in the back over towards the Littlands where they... But it's funny to me you only ever found that big old long rod they drove down. Could have just missed it. Like Dennis said, it's taking, they're digging a quarter of it. Maybe they just missed it. Maybe and they're going to go back ways. now pretty soon. When y'all leaving? The uh, majority of people will be leaving on uh, this weekend. And then he leaves for next year? Maybe, if they can. There's so much money appropriate every year for it, ain't there? Uh, no, it's, it's appropriate. I'd like to, I always, but my own self, imagination, I'd like to know what was in it. I know that it was a man-made mound, all right. I know that. Because it always hurt it. Was that area that was used as the ball field, did you? Do you ever recall it being uh, wooded? Was there trees on it? Or is it no, pretty, that's what I say. I don't, just I don't, like it is today. And this old lady Phelps, now that I talked to, Ruth's grandma, and she was 84 when she died, and she's been dead 15 years. And she told me that she picked cotton there in all all time. And she said it always been just uh, cleared off. And she said old man Duncan, she thought done that, you know, he cleared that, fixed that. Mm-hmm. And then he told his wife he wanted to be buried there on top of that when he died, that man. In the field on the north of the road there, too? No, just that, that one there, just on the that side of the road. What I'm, that just, she said that had just always okay. been there, you know, all back now. She'd been raised there. So. How about the one on the north side of the road? Was it wooded? Yeah, we both had a lot of that tree there. All down through that, he had the road over just to clean that out. All it was just growed up, you know, and trees all over it and everything else. Was there any pasture land within that area? Yeah, there was little, but it wasn't too much. But he got it cleaned up. That would be after What kind of a house is it now? Is it about tore up? Or? Well, we put a lot of time into it. It's now livable again. Is it? Well, we had fixed up there pretty good once, and we had a bathroom put in it, and had the water put from our well down to that one. And I had one big bedroom, then one little bedroom. And we had pretty good cabinets and everything in the kitchen. We had it fixed up very well. Just workmen live there, and uh, they done a lot of work to it, and she taped every little crack and everything, but they've been trying to use overhead. You know, there's upstairs like any wood. Mm-hmm. They've been employed and took it out. She didn't try to use it. Do you all try to use it? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Where did the workers live there? Well, they lived there. They was living on the corner in the house that nobody don't stay in much. See, that's still in our name, mm-hmm. that house is. And uh, the woman sent me the rent on that all the time. She keeps it ready, just uh, the storage. I think they just got it for storage. Just got Last time I went around that corner there, they just uh, all over the yard and everywhere, just old everything. And sure did look awful. Just the one just east of the 
the house uh -huh. east of you all there. Echo House. Wait, what is the story behind that house? Oh, that one, Claude, when he was married and all, we built that, he, we had that picture for him there. Or, but, but I said everything was all over the yard. We had that place fixed up pretty good. They tore the fence all out. Somebody, I guess, moving had a pretty good fence around it. And Jess Workman lived there. And he built that rock house over the well, and then he built the garage. It looked like they had the garage full and the porch all full of it. So where did Jess Workman live? Did he live in the... That's how he lived. He worked on the Reinhardt Ranch. He got cut off the ranch and come down and read that house. He lived for a year at, for a while and then lived, lived, moved on over on the corner. He thought he'd rather be on the corner when somebody moved, I think, many we were there, and she moved out. What was his wife's name? Jess Workman? Maggie. Maggie Workman. She's married to me now. No, we never had made Bob no deed to that. It goes with the place. We promised we didn't have it with the place. I told him, I said, you better get somebody out and get a deed made. And me and Mose pass on while you may have covered the house. Oh, he said, don't have to. Just down and keep putting it on. Well, that's what Jess was doing. 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 Them folks has had it now for about three years. I think that they're what they're planning on building them a house down somewhere, but they never have built it. Wonder if they're building on it. You it sounds understand? like they're building now. Are they? And they're yeah. actually still yeah. living there. They're now. actually living there now, are they? Be closer to where they're building. Now. Yeah, that's what they wanted for to stay there. Then they'll move all that plunder out from there. Do you recall another house being south? Of that road, and you know, it's the south uh -huh. of the house we're standing uh -huh. in there. Yeah, yeah, there was when we moved over there. There's a house there. What kind of house was that? Well, it was a pretty good. Just it was. It wasn't a log house. It was just a box house. Pretty good box house. Jeremiah lived there, I believe. After we, when we first moved over there, he had a little old store off down there, about where that old house is all over. What side of the section line road would the house have been on? Well, the house is, uh, the house is right straight down from where you are, right? Yeah. right across I meant the, the store. Well, oh, the store was right on down on the road there from that. Where the road goes through, you're straight through, you know, it's the west, west side of the road? It was on the same side of the house, was I'd have been on the, yeah, been on the east side of the road, wouldn't it? Oh. And the west on the other side. The old house standing there, it's all open now. That was where they lived at the people's Homer Smith. Yes. Um, did he have, did Buster Jeremiah had a store? His stuff, Buster's dad they oh. had the little store. What was his name? Ted? No, R, his name was R.A. Bob. We called him Bob. R.A. Robert Jeremiah. Oh. Buster's dad, he's the one who owned the little store when we moved over there. Well, Andy Rogers still had the post office up there when we first moved over there. And he had a few little things to sell in there. Not much. And he won. So they so glad, you know, when we come over there, I'll tell you, I never seen people who's proud of anything. We just had to always crowds. Every Sunday just like a picnic down that creek. They had the ties made and brought in there, you know, and there's people sat on them. Shady all out there, there's trees all out there, everything. Were people still planting cotton at the time when you moved into the area? Yeah, they was planting cotton, corn. All out in front where Bob's got his soybeans was in corn. Mo's had it in corn for several years, and the boars got to get in the roots of it, and he quit grazing and turned it to a pasture. Now Bob's got to start doing something else on the he's going to make it. Was there a cotton gin in the area that you recall? Yeah, it used to be one right there below you all, right down where I told you the store where there's cotton gin there. So Bob, Bob Jeremiah had the store? Yeah, but he didn't have the cotton gin. At the either. same time as Homer Smith lived in the yeah. house? Yeah. 
Well, Homer Smith didn't live there. Homer owned it, but he wouldn't live there. The old man, Homer Smith, Shorty Smith, lived there later. Oh. His son. As his son. Homer died, you know, he died up there. Or killed himself, I think, in a family like a house on a lake or something. So he's going to drown himself in these creeks, and I kept telling him, I said, Homer, they know you should talk in that. You might do it. I said, you can just talk anything, you can do it, you know. Who was working the cotton gin back in those days? Well, we had one at Long too, and I don't know now who was, I, I can't recall just who was running that in the short. But we had big cotton gin at Long. At that time on, we moved up to Long. We moved up there in 25. Left our place um, down. I didn't see it when you're going to Marco. Yeah, you know that big round hill like up there? You go around, you go around that hill, you want to motor. Where's that house you see off down there? That is my place. There's a little house that's north of the Homer Smith's place. Sets out there on. Now that's on that's on Bob's part of the land or ours. Now that's where that uh, Granny Blackbird lived when we moved short. She lived with her daughter Eder. They lived there. So which which uh, grandmother Blackbird was that day? What was her first name? Nancy. Nancy Blackbird was her name. We had heard that she had lived up on top of that Blackbird Mountain at one time also. Well, maybe that's the way for it. Uh, no, I'm not really studying archaeology. You the cook? No. <laughs> I'm just one of the people that goes out and talks to people. Like oh, like, like this, now. that's your job. Yeah. Trying to do the history. I reckon they'll kind of make a history of this mound or something. Mm -hmm. So how long did... Uh, Grandma Nancy Blackford lived in that house. Oh, she, she died there. She died there. Uh, she's been dead. She's been dead a long time. She died in the 50s. So. Did other people live there after right? uh -huh. And before her, I think. Some lived there while she lived up on that mountain you're talking about. I never did go up there. Blackbird Mountain. When we first, after we first moved over, our age went to the army. When he come back, why, he just wanted to fish all the time, you know, and there's an old man that lived over there, old man George Chambers. And him and that old man get up every morning and get them a lunch fix just like this and uh, going to school or something. <laughs> they go on that creek, and they caught some of the finest fish you ever seen down that Blackbird Valley. I've got pictures. I was looking the other day at them, and I told Mose, I said, here's one they caught this for seven pounds. Catfish? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And H said he had to make a raft and go out to mm -hmm. keep it on that raft, you know. And he'd get the big kick, you know, it was out of them. Seven and eight and ten pounds, that was nothing for him to get them. Mm -hmm. And 27 pounds, and oh, they just talked. Well, he fished for about 30 days after he'd come in from the Army. Come in home in uh, January of '47. Who was uh, George Chambers? Where did he live? Well, he's just an old man that come and settled in there, and and he's retired, and he's he just loved to fish, you know. And he's taken a bet to have H go with him. Where did he? H is about live? twenty-two years old at that time. 
He stayed in the army three years. He was in the paratroopers. Hmm. He took his training in New Guinea. Huh? New Guinea. Uh-huh. Well, he, he went first to North Carolina, and then from there they went to New Guinea. And that's where he'd become a qualified paratrooper. Did Mr. Chambers, did he live in Short? Uh huh. Yeah. He lived there in, he lived there in that old house, I believe, at the time there that uh, you said is across the road from the Short Smith house. The old house about down there. So he lived in the house then the Blackbirds lived in? Mm-hmm. After Dick Armour lived there a long time, after we moved over there. About going further down the road, uh, well, when did they put that bridge in that would be just south of the store, or over the short branch? Was there a bridge there, or was it uh, for a long time? There's a cement bridge there now, it's short of the... The short branch, yeah. you mean the... It's just south of the Homer Smith place. Well, they built that while we was over there. They did. I forget this plot. Yeah. Was the store up on near the mound or down by the river? It was up on the more towards the mound. Yeah. That's right. where that old short store was and cotton gin and all was right in there by that Homer Smith house. All of them sat right yeah. in there. Well, for, as you go down that road further, was there was there another house? Or another yes. store? Or? No, there wasn't any more stores. That mm-hmm. was winding up right there. But there was a house or two on down, and the Horbus Jeremiah sold out. There was an old, uh, when we first moved there, I think that was kind of a log house. But later, Bus, he built a pretty good house down there, you know, mm-hmm. on that place. And that would be down there? Now, that was his sister's lot then, down there, or that's where he that, got that old. That would be down to the end of the section line and uh-huh. going back east a little yeah. bit. It would be on the south side. On the south side. Well, what? on down in that field, the old house now that the people lived in on that farm when we first went there. George Lee Johnson lived there. Married Buss's sister. They lived there. It was her lot. Annie's his wife was there a lot. You talk about the same place that uh, jo- uh, Jeremiah lived in or another mm-hmm. place? Same time. Do you ever see she was uh, Annie was a Jeremiah married George Lee Johnson. They lived down mm-hmm. there. Um, it was her place. She she they're part Indian too. No, but they got allotments. That's her. Mm-hmm. That was her lot, and they lived on it. And bus bought it off her. They went to California. George Lee and Annie did. And uh, did they farm it? Yeah, they farmed. It. What did they raise down oh, there? Oh, they raised. Mostly corn. Be back then, they raised lots of corn on Lee's Creek. When they, when people raise corn, uh, did they plant corn every year, or did yep. they? That's where they done their own they place. Just kept them boars got in the reach of the corn. The same now. thing, corn every year. And uh, go up the stock kindly, and most said, "Well, the only thing do is quit raising corn and get rid of them that way." So there ain't been no corn there since. Did anybody ever plant uh, peanuts around there? Mm-hmm. It's just mostly corn and cotton. Corn and cotton is what they raised for years. That's all they hadn't getting any money out of. Mm-hmm. How about um, oh, fruits and vegetables and that kind of thing? Do- well, they finally got to where they'd plant beans. People would sell green beans, you know, and they, some of them have bean patch sell a few green beans. Oh, they just, uh, mm-hmm. most of them had gardens, you know, and raised their it's a home garden. Uh-huh. I had a good garden when I lived there where you all at now when I was there. But they just tore down and changed that up there. Waters is really, and they even changed the house up. I had a glass den back porch. It was just a wonderful place to sit out there. And if they ain't made it into little rooms, it was all glassed in and, and they had the shades out over the windows, you know. And in the summer or winter, that is just the finest place. In the winter time, it's warm because the sun went through all them windows. We wouldn't even need fire out there. And I went in over there here the other day. I went up there when the cherries was ripe. And I went in the house and I said, What in the world have you done to this house? She said, Well, Waters, this is one done. 
and they tore all the front porch off, you know, we had it all screened in, mm -hmm. tore that all off. Oh, um, me, they just tore that place up. Tore the chicken house. I had a chicken house out there and had a concrete floor and part of it where I kept the feet. And mm. That thing's moved out completely and gone. I don't know what they done to it. And the barn looks like it's about to rot down. Everything I said, well, just everything didn't look like it did. Of course, the states owns that and they they don't care. They don't. I guess they will fix it like that. I'll add maybe they might keep the old store kind of up, but they ain't. Now that porch is going to fall off that front porch, off that store, because it's it already been kept uh, fixed up. Oh, we're in uh, Jeremiah's uh, had farm down there south of the store. Yeah, down the end, yeah they farmed. But oh, when you got down there to that second cross line there, if you went uh, uh, right to the creek. Was there any houses no, in that area? No. And there's an island over there. Our cattle used to run on that island before we got to keep them up. Was that a crossing right there? Uh -huh. or is that a we crossed there and went crossed over there, and there's a big island in there. Mm -hmm. And uh, there's where our cattle would stay nearly all the time. Mm -hmm. And I know Mose had a good horse there. Katie Abel, that's Claude's wife. Oh, she liked to ride. Anytime Moses mentioned sin about them cattle, she rounded them up. We had a <laughs> pony that really good bringing cattle in. A cattle stole to there. Where would the road go to Star Ford? I mean, how well, would you, you had get to there? go in the bus's field. The rest, I, the rest I remember we had to go in the bus's field and go down to Star Ford. I don't know what they've got fixed now. Where would it meet up with the road there? Well, the point? road would come down. The one that was come down, we used to travel, would come down in front of the old star house and everything. And I don't know hardly how you got in there. I never did stroll around down there much myself. But I just know they'd always say they had to go fishing, they had to go in the bus field or down there. Well, the. Uh, Are they catching any fish over there now? Earlier they did. Um, this Dorothy told seven. me that Levi <clears> caught a. <throat> five or six pound catfish mm -hmm. and, and that they had cooked it. Now that is just not too many days ago. I called her and Moles and talked to her. Going south on that road again from the mound, you get over that bridge. And was there a house on the right hand side as you're going south? Mm -hmm. What kind of house was it? It is a boxed house. Yeah. Was there anybody and and family had, associated with it? Well, I don't know who lives down there just right now. Who lives There's a little know? trailer there now, and the people who are farming have a trailer there. That's there. Don't have no house there? No, no house I guess there it burnt down. Well, there's a pretty good little two-room boxed house and a long kitchen lot. Uh -huh. I know we went down there to see uh, Miss Jermar's sister live there. What was her name? You know, that's been a good while ago. I've almost got their names. So when you moved the store in, that house, there was a house there then? Oh, yeah. And then when you left, there was a house there? Yes, there was a house there then. Some Indian folks lived in it when we left over there. I think that was um, Bird, his name. Maggie Jean Bird lived there when we lived there. Down in that house. Was there any other houses besides Jeremiah? That's all house? the house there was then until you got down there at that Bush Jeremiah house. There's only two of them down there. Uh huh. And I didn't, and further on, well, that was just the bottom the moment you got the star. It's good dirt down in there. I went back over there and moved and gathered pokes out of it down there a little oh. bit. Bulldoze that all up. I never seen any pokes out of it. Y'all like poke? Good. Was there anybody living up uh, north of your place? Just right oh, across yes. the road on the north side? There's lots of people that uh, live north of us, but they ain't living there now. I think Tom Welch lives back up there, they say, the reader for it. 
It's quite a ways up there. And well, I guess he's just about the only one who's back there now. He's on the north side Boy, of the Or there used to be lots of yeah. people live back there. The Howells, it was Lester and Lewis Howells, families lived back there, and uh, and Scott Phelps, and Bert Morton, and all, oh, and Tills Fuller, they just lots of people lived back in there. But now they yeah. all them houses gone. After they sold it, you know, to the the ranch people got to buy that hole. That used to be, we just turn our cattle out of people with there, and they'd go all back in there, there wasn't no fences. Mm -hmm. That's where they stayed. Claude used to turn his out back there in the state of spring, come in. Without, Step in there without get, taking, taking care of I them mean, to go in the spring and stay there till fall. They'd come in in the fall then. Mm. Do you just go out and check on them once in a while? Uh huh. Yeah. Well, did anybody ever live uh, between your place and the creek? Where we were at Up now? North? Yeah. No, you see, we live down the there. We know that there. Nobody else ever lived down there. It's caused overflows, you know, they don't want that. Yeah. Now. Were there any houses up by the sawmill? No. Just a sawmill there? There used to be a house across the brink from where the sawmill was. Punk Barnes lived there. It's up on the, up on the ridge there? No, it was just across over there. just kind of a little black place. You crossed the, right there at the Duncan Ford, they call it. That's where it was. And Punk Barnes' house there. I don't guess anything. I know there ain't anything right now. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I guess the little house is all right down there out from there. And uh, this George Waters' wife was one of her children, Pump Barnes and Betty's girls with that water. She was raised there. Her daddy made ties for living. Oh, a lot of them made ties for living. But they get most of the lumber from? Well, it's the trees. There's lots of trees, you know, big trees that saw them get tired. Sometimes they get two or three ties, maybe out of one tree. But a lot of that timber ain't there now. See, uh, the Reinhardts, they sprayed the timber and killed a whole lot of the trees. Did the Reinhardts come in there while you were there? Huh. And before they come in there, it was... Uh, we was there when the other bunch come in there, and then before they come in there. Merle Edwards lived up there a long time, just before this first bunch come in. Now I forgot their names. But they sold out to the Reinhardts, and then Reinhardt sold out to Kurt Singer. They say there's a bunch come in up there around that round mountain or somewhere, and all come in there, and just a kind of a little bunch of them stays together. Have you seen them? What are they doing up there? Um, seems like it's a uh, religious community, people from uh, there. They are. Trailers. Have they got them a church house? Oh, uh, yeah. They, got them, uh, they, have, they live in trailers and then they're building their houses little by little. Well, they said they was going to build them houses and they going to build them a store and everything they told up there. See, there's a man come in there and leased a lot of that land for gas or oil or something. At least ours. About up to a guess. Going back to uh, when you lived in by the mouth of Weber, was it called the, what was that community called then? Mouth of Weber, it's all over. Mouth of Weber? I reckon that's where the little big or the or the creek where yeah. the creek entered into the big creek and they called it the mouth. Where, where was the where was the the road or the trail that went through like say could could you get from where you lived to Uniontown? Yes. Pretty easy. We we done that now in my time we done that pretty good. But at the time my mother and father come from there, I moved up uh, north of Long, when before, and before I was born, I was telling you. Well, she said there were nothing trails and no roads at all. Mm. The trails. And she said that was in April, and the grass seemed like there wasn't so much high timber then, as more. And she said the grass come up to the horses' bellies, I know then. Mm. And there was so much wild game and everything. 
And she said she always, when she wanted quail, she had her trap she set in the yard, and she said she pulled mm -hmm. strings on the in the house. She <laughs> told quails when she wanted them. <laughs> and they said then that later that white man from Mulgrove got to coming up in there and hunting quail. They'd, they'd get Tosac quail. And mm -hmm. said they'd just pour out her whatever she wanted. Of course, people didn't have no ice boxes or anything. Keep things you had to cook and things sealed up, kept it. You had brothers and sisters who were born there in uh, yeah. Weber? Yeah. I just had two sisters born from out of Weber. When they moved up there, they just had Bessie and Carrie. And I was born then about two years, my sister Lillian. And then Frank was the next. And Hazel. Gladys, Gladys just seven months so old. She's born long. She died there. You remember uh, Guy Nell's store? Oh, yeah. Guy, he had a store there. How long did it last? He didn't last too long, but I think he done very well. He was right there on the corner up there. You know, you, they showed you where his store was. He just had a little store thrown up there. He knew him very well, though, I think. He said anybody owed him, he just met him out on the side of the road. <laughs> you know guy, you see him. He told him, now this is it. Now you're going to pay me or else. He said he didn't lose very much. We lost, we lost a lot there. Mm. Oh, they'd skip you with their checks, you know. Lie to you, let go of the <laughs> was that your your main source of income, or did you? Oh yeah, did you have I had, or we had or a place. I had a place, and we always had cattle. Moses had sold his place, but I still had yeah. mine when we lived there. Oh, a rent rent house, you mean? No, I mean my farm down Mineral Springs. Oh, yeah. But did you lease your farm out to somebody? To yes, I did that. Yeah. Most never would go back to it. He's the quietest man. He never would go back to that farm. He wouldn't go down there to see about nothing. If he could send somebody else and pay them, that's all right, but he couldn't do it mm -hmm. Well, then when he left short, same thing. He wouldn't go back to their hardly at all. Mm -hmm. So like when he puts anything, and Lucille said she just liked him. She put her store and said she didn't even want to go back out there. <laughs> they just kind of quiet. Yeah. I told Mose this morning, I went over, I said, now they're coming back to see them if you're not going to be out there. Well, he says, you can tell them when I can anyway. <laughs> he was better this morning, though. <coughs> yeah, I think he's going to be all right <coughs> now. They're going to put him out of the intensive care into a room today. Oh, that's good. He's interested in Bob mm. in the election, you know. He says, <laughs> he says, this morning, he says, now you better let Bob have some money. He says, I imagine he needs some money of buying all this stuff. You know, he's getting up some. I says, well, Bob's got a little money, I guess. I says, if he needs it, I'll let him have a little. So our election's pretty big uh, affairs? Yeah. Oh, sometimes, you know, they get pretty. Most can always get some worked up over elections. But to get, he's nervous a lot. He kind of gets, <clears throat> they got to talking about it here the other evening, you know, and I said, well, most get talking about it, and he'll have one of them spells, sure enough. Mm -hmm. You know, and anything that, anything just upsets him kind of. That's right, he don't go nowhere <clears throat> or anything. He can't stand nothing. I never did see him like that. What was politics like back when you lived up there in church? Oh, Lord. Used to be, you know, you buy people to vote. I told him that day's kind of over with now, though. Did people run from that area for county offices? Or oh, yeah. Did people come here yeah, and go they, up there? And yeah, when we first went into, out of the territory into Oklahoma, you know, well, that's when I can remember when we had our first picnic and all these are running, you know, there's running for them offices. Johnny Johnson was our first sheriff, and C.N. Haskell was our first governor. 
and I guess it was all over, for all over Oklahoma. I don't know. Wasn't it? I guess it was Sequoia County, but anyhow, they was a running. And blind Senator Gore, he was for the senator, you know. I remember them three, and they made speeches, you know, and at this old church house. I was telling you, we had it long, and they had a seats all out there and kind of a picnic. I remember when they run. I know I thought Johnny Johnson was the finest looking man I ever seen. He's an Indian, you know, and boy, he was a fine looking. He's about 25 years old. And he was our sheriff for here in Sequoia County for, oh, years. Kind of like E.W. Floyd. You know, E.W. was for years, too. Did y'all ever hear anything about mm -hmm. E.W. Floyd, and, or not E.W., but Charles Floyd and his brother, and Bonnie and Clyde? <laughs> it's heard that his brother was... Bonnie and Clyde went to my brother's, brother's house one time. Oh, they did? Uh, he yeah. was, uh, he married Oma Wicked. They lived, her lot members over there at Aikens, they lived on the his back kind of in the mountain like. And uh, so he... Uh, E.W. took them, herded Bonnie and Clyde out there because Clyde was shot. And E.W. and over in with him, of course. And they went to their house one evening, and Frank was gone, and Omi was there. And E.W. told Omi that he wanted to bring him in and get him cleaned up his shot and the blood dried on him. So they went in, Omi put on the water. She scared to death. She said she never scared to death. But they put the water on, got it hot, and Frank wasn't even there, but there was a man working out at the barn, but they kept watching this man at the barn, you know. And uh, only put on water and hit it and washed his blood. They got the blood washed off of him, and uh, E.W. went down to a uh, green store down at, at Aikens and got some, I guess, mercure chrome or something to put on his wounds. So they got him in there, washed him up, and put that stuff medicine on him. And he was at the wheel, but they got him out and brought him in. And then they took him back and put him in the car, and she went to the wheel. And Ola said she wanted to pay her, you know. She said, now we're going to pay you for this. Ola says, no, I just want you to get away just as quick as you can, because I'm scared to death. And said she said, well, we don't need no money where we are going. They was killed just right away after. Huh. And, um, that's up there. Now, E.W. Uh, Floyd took him up there? Uh-huh. E.W. directed him up there. See, something had to be done for him. He was shot. They well, were friends, you know, of course. They were Charlie Floyd. Oh, was E.W. sheriff at the time? Uh-uh, no. No, E.W. was just a big old boy. Oh, that was before. And that's way back yeah. in the 30s. I mean, Frank lived out there at the edge of that mountain on the other side of Aiken. Oh. They, meant to, they meant to go to Burt Green's, and Burt Green was a friend to Floyd, too. They meant to go there, and they had company or something. And he just directed them out, Frank and Omi's in, to get him cleaned up with that blood. Oh, oh Omi said they was dirty, though, and she was. She's a little bitty woman. Mm. Uh, some of them said she didn't weigh over 90 pounds. I but anyhow, she took the wheel and she told Omi, she said, we don't need no money where we're going, and then she did. And she did. But that was the most frightening time <laughs> Omi says of her life now. She told D.W., says, I don't want you never to bring nobody else here. Like well, D.W. Well, had to do something, mm -hmm. I guess. You had to help them out somewhere. Was All of them outlaws would help one another. You know. Was that before... Uh was Charles a younger that's, man that's there? before Charlie was a kid. Was he an outlaw then too? Yeah. Do you have any uh, robberies or anything while you were running the store there? No, we never did have no robberies hardly at all. Our store broke into once or twice. But, well, we just lived so close to it, I guess. I broke into the window not long before we left there and got a few little things. A little money was in the cash register, was nothing much in it. We would never leave no money. We got almost to it a few times. The day that the, 
I went to the hospital, and my daughter had come out there to stay with Mose, of course she drove the truck, she didn't bring her car. And one evening late, there's a, I heard it on the news that they robbed the Vian Bank and that they was over close to the Arkansas line, they thought. And I told the nurse, I said, that sounds like over there where we're at. Well, Claudine says it's over there. She said she's seen a Cadillac sitting in front of the store. And she said, told my sister, she says, I'm going out to the store to see about Papa. Mm -hmm. Says somebody's out there this late. And she went out there and she said one of them was right over Moe's at the cash register and he's talking about some land, trying to find some land, you know. And the other one was sitting back and Claudine knew this other one kind of from Van Buren. She said, no living. Uh, she said, you'd better get your cash register if you seen him uh, stand around and take it with you where you get it. And that was, it was really, that was who, they, who they was, and they got away and went on. And she said, boy, they got out there in a hurry, and they seen her. They didn't think anybody was there but Moses, you see. It was late in the evening, he was ready to close there. Mm -hmm. And he said if they had robbed him that evening, he had about $800. That's all they got off of him. Mm -hmm. But uh, they had robbed the fine bank, and they went on there. But I kept hearing it. I was uh, over the hospital. I'd been operating on them. And they said it was in... Mm -hmm. uh, north there, and it's where that there's close to the line of Arkansas and Oklahoma, and I told the nurse, I said, I know where they're at. I said, now that's our place, and I just worried to death. That about as nice. Well, one time he said he's out there by himself one day at noon, and everything is kind of summertime like this, and everything was quiet, and nobody knew. And he said this bunch drove up in the front, and they just headed like this, coming in on that porch, you know, but they didn't, of course. And he's kind of looking out the window, and he said he's seen them pass a gun in that car. Well, when he seen that, he got his shotgun, and he just walked over across in front of the door to the other side and let them see him, you know. <laughs> That's so that fits that. He said they didn't tarry long. He said he was ready for him. He thought that's what they was going to do. We just almost got it a few times, but we never did just get that up. But nowadays, it's so much of that. Uh -huh. Where was the nearest bank? Huh? Where was the nearest bank to Short? Oh, to Short would have been uh, Barbara or Van Buren. Van Buren's close to Short. I think the claim about 18 miles short of Van Buren. Union Town didn't have a bank? Oh, no. Union Town never did have one. Long did. You said you were sick when that. Yeah, I was had people the, were there? What was your I name? had the gallbladder. Oh. Trouble, I had the gallstones removed. Mm. Oh, that is. Yeah, that's been several years ago. 2059. Were your parents still living when you no. uh, moved up too short? No, my mother died in 25, 1925. I was living in our springs then. Our age was two years old. But my dad lived till we moved to Long. See, that's how it comes to go to Long. It was on account of my dad. Went up there to How many people would have died in typhoid, or how oh, prevalent was it? There's lots of people died. There's lots of people laying sick with when we moved to Charlotte. We sold that chill tiny. Like where, everything. Where did you buy the tonic from? Oh, we got it from the, in Fort Smith. You know, we had to buy our medicines out of Fort Smith. Mm -hmm. What kind of chill tonic was it? Call the company or what, yes, what I, was I should I should recall it as much as we sold of it. Let's see what it was. Oh, I believe I forgot the name of it. We sold lots of chill time to go there. Then later on they all got the itch and we sold lots of medicine for the itch. 
What kind of itch? Dr. Baker's ointment. Well, there's a doctor that had come through there selling them, and it was a sore chop for the itch. Hmm. It was right after the after the World War One, you know, everybody had it. Then, what would the itch be called today? It'd be called the itch. There would be a lot of different kinds of things. Yeah, it's, it's a, a lot. They don't have it anymore, but I don't know this. After the war, they got to having it over there, and they, they just kept it up, I reckon. We sold that for a long time. There's some of them that never could get rid of it, but I reckon hardly. Just one of them epidemics. I've never heard of, uh, did you ever hear malaria? Yeah, that mm -hmm. malarial fever. Yeah. Anybody around there ever Well, heard that's, that? that's the chills, the malaria. You've got that when you're having mm -hmm. them chills. Malarial chills is what it was. Was that at different times or just one epidemic? Well, like you'd have them every other day. Sometimes they'd have them every day. And my children was having them pretty bad when we moved them. See, there's a little old creek down there where we'd live on my place. Mm -hmm. And it seemed like it wasn't very healthy there. That was one reason I didn't care if we did leave there. Claude had a fever there one whole summer. And uh, I'd, we'd think we'd go somewhere, and I'd say, well, I'll see if Claude's got any fever, and he'd be 102. And he was up and going and playing around. And I don't know what kind of fever it was. Sometimes I think it must have been a walking typhoid. And uh, finally, I told Dr. Hicks, I says, Claudia's a, a going deep. He says, it's that quinine. He says, He's having me give him so much quinine, you know, that Claudia couldn't hear nothing. I tell him to do anything, pay no more attention to you or nothing. <laughs> he talks about it today. He said, he didn't say nothing to us. But he said lots of times his papa would tell him to do something, and he'd just go and just guess at it, you know, and wouldn't more be right enough. And Dr. Hicks had cut it out, says he took it all summer, so I cut her out and Claude got better and got all right. But I think it must have been a walking time for it. I think the people that lived up the higher levels, you think they... That well, they were the, not up there long. We got up long while the children didn't have any more chills much. Right. I guess they got all right. You see, that's more up, higher up. But down there on my place, it's kind of low, and in there on that little... Black Creek, I believe they called her Skin Bible, and it's Skin Bible. No, I was, in a way, I was kind of glad to move from there. See, Long was where I was raised, and I just kind of liked it up there in a way. Did you know uh, Duties down at Skin Bible? Dees. Duty. Duty. Any Duty? I know some duty. Sarah Duty. Who? Sarah. He's married to George Sutton. Oh, no George Sutton. She George Sutton. She lived at, down by Skin Bayou. Yeah. At one time. It may have been a different time. Well, what, uh, what did you do? Like, when did you start serving cold drinks? Oh, me. We didn't have no cold drinks. Well, finally, the uh, man got to bring him a chunk of ice, you know, and we got one of them old boxes that uh, mm -hmm. you just put the big chunk of ice in there. And we got to keep them a little pop thing. They're different looking bottles to what they have now. And, uh, oh, we all just went crazy over the pop nearly. <laughs> <laughs> when was that? What year? Well, what let's year? see. That was. Uh, that was before we got the electric. Of course, after we got the electric, well, we had our pop boxes in, you see, and we had ice cream. My, we was all really going to town then. We was <laughs> really having picnics. <laughs> I first, when I first got to having a little bit of ice cream, I had a surveil box. The old surveil box is sitting out there yet, I believe, in that store. And it was at the house at first, and it was a dandy when it was new. And I'd get, oh, a dozen or so of uh, little pints of ice cream and put them on top of that box, and they'd come out there and get them, you know, and I'd let people have them. I'd keep it that way a little while till we got an ice cream box in and got to have an ice cream. 
Well, that is in, when we got the electric, is when I began to do that. That was in 50, 52, and something there. But that old survey box, you know, we'd run on gas, kind of, or something. Butane gas. And that thing run as long as we was there, and it was still doing all right. And I imagine it's hooked up yet to get cold. Do you all have an icebox down there where you're at? What year did they put that road in, uh, you know, hard top? Oh, that was uh, in 46, I believe, or maybe the last 45. I tell you, before they put that in, that road was ridiculous. If we wasn't eating dirt, see, there was two or three school buses went over that road, and they'd have church up there, and there'd be a hundred people go to that church every Saturday and Sunday and whenever they was having attractive meetings. And finally, I I wrote myself to Muskogee to the road commission, you know, and I told them something had to be done over that that road, or the when I was going to live very long. I was taking a call. And they, of course, sent it right back down south, so to R.C. Williams, I reckon. And I wrote them a letter, and they wrote back and said they couldn't possibly get to it before 47. That's in 46, I believe. And I told them, I said, there's not any need for you to come over here in 47. There won't be none of us here. We'll all be dead eating this dirt. And I, well, I just wrote them a story to that time. Well, they sent that to R.C. Williams, south, so he is our commissioner, you know. And uh, so... Uh, Moles and uh, Huey Steely, and I believe some other man went with them, I forget who, went to Salisaw, and they talked to R.C. about it. And R.C. says, well, it, 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 they'd been sending my letters on down there to him, and he, they said it looked like that uh, there's something going to have to be done. And he says, well, I'll just call them up and see what they said about it. He called them up, and they said, well, they didn't have the men to do the work, and something else they didn't have, some kind of equipment. And R.C. told them, he says, I've got the men and I've got that if you'll just let us have this. Let's have this black top road. Well, they did, and then they got it just right at once. I never was proud of anything in my life. I'll tell you, you don't have nobody have the dirt come in that store every evening. Mm -hmm. And that just looked like a smoke plumb from our store to the creek when them cars began to come. And there's a lot of people went there to church. And I could all come over there, you know. Mm -hmm. We went back in there, why? Well, they all came down to the... And I told him, I said, there's three buses runs over this road and two mail routes. See, there's coming out of Arkansas and Mother Row both met there. I told him everything, and boy, I had to get the road started. I was going to have to get that thing started. R.C. says the only thing done was I get through the old. <laughs> so did they oil it first? And put yeah, they oiled it and put the black top on it, you know. Yeah, first that thing. thick black top. Right? Yeah. We had a good road. And so that was 1946? Uh-huh. Mm -hmm. And then after that, while they, they took it over, you know, and they really keeping it up good now. Mm -hmm. We've got good roads over there all the time. Oh, I was so proud of that. Well, I'll tell you, I couldn't stay there. I was taking a call from the third dirt. was too turbulent. We had to stay in that drone. We'd even shut the front door to keep some of it out. It's all over everything. I never was as outdone with anything in my life as I was that dirt. Mm -hmm. I told them they just haul it, just do anything to it, you know. Well, R. C. Williams helped us. They ought to give, they ought to give it to them, and as long as well, he's dead now, he don't want to get more. But his wife's asking for it. They ought to give it to her. Well, she's got them same men working under it. R. C. had. I don't know what the people over there. Does the people over there talk like they're for her or not? Or do you hear them say? Uh -huh. Well, they ought to be for her. I'll tell you right now, they wouldn't have had no road with them being for Williams. Not for a long time, until they got good and ready. So you said the road right in front of the store was it paid for 40, or was paid for 46? They put that black top road in 46. I thought, going to be sure that you had, when was that taken? It looked like it was a dirt road then. Well, was that? that was taken. That was taken after we had the road, I believe, though. But of course, they didn't put it right on up to the store, you know, and that would look a little different there. Looked, that was just the side of the road. We tried to get them to come on around the store. Did the people in, um, when you first put the 
had the store up there, did the people that lived in Short pretty much come to your store and the ones that Yeah, they in used to did, and then they go got to where there. that they, a lot of them, they went to town if they got cars, you know. Mm -hmm. They'd go town trade. They'd trade some of those, like Lynn's folks now, Lynn and Edna, they trade some of town, and they trade quite a lot with us, too. And that's the way they'd all do. Of course, some of them get mad at you and won't trade with you at all. <laughs> Mosey did that. I don't believe they got mad at me, some of them, as much as they did to him. They might have, but I didn't much think they did. Well, when they put the road in, did it go all the way from Nycott all the way to State Line? When they put yeah. the hard top on? They did it all in one, one time? Uh -huh. Went all to the State Line. Yeah, they went on through with that block top. That was really a jolly time for me. I enjoyed <laughs> that better than anything they ever done over there, mm -hmm. I believe. Of course, electricity, when it got there, and the telephones, that was pretty nice. But that dirt, we was right down there where we really caught it. Yeah, especially after you. Well, it was all after you cleared that field across the, oh, yeah. across the road there. Well, he, that field was partly cleared, but all through that low place was all full of trees. Mose had that all took out. He's had quite a lot of money there, fencing and cleaning up. So, like, from 30, 36 to, uh, <clears throat> well... Thirty-six on. Did did he farm after he cleared that field north of the road? Did uh -huh. he use it for he farming? He farmed there for the cattle. He farmed there until I told you the corn got to work. You know, mm -hmm. and then after he put corn, well, he just went to pasture and put cattle on the pasture. We didn't buy too many cattle. We raised our cattle. We had a good bunch of cattle when we left there. Mm -hmm. I think we had fifty some out head, but there's good white face cattle. Sold a whole bunch for seven thousand dollars. John Hubbler bought them. See, John Hubbler, when we left there, was running the ranch up there. He was the manager? Or an owner? He was the manager. Mm -hmm. Reinhardt owned it, but John was running it. What kind he of? Never did, he didn't never run it under, I don't think, under Kurt Singer, I believe. It. He might have after Kurt Singer went there. See, Kurt Singer come there after we left over there, and John Retha was still there, and I don't know they might have. Retha was his wife? Huh. What did they, uh, what did they do mostly? Was it cattle or well, farming? Cattle. It's cattle. Did they do any farming? A little bit of farming. Mostly cattle. Mostly cattle. The old ranch. Yeah, they'd have a bunch here and a bunch there. And they'd have to and he had dogs that took care of them. If he wanted to spray his cattle, all he had to do was get his dogs out there, and they kept them all up in a little wad while he sprayed them. Mm. Look what kind of dogs it was. Did anybody ever have sheep around? No, there were no sheep up there. There were dogs. How about goats? No, no goats. I don't know if anyone had goats. They had hogs, didn't they? Yeah. What was the reason for you to close up shop and leave? Short. Us? Yeah. Well, it is our age, you know. Yeah. And uh, Mose was getting to her when we was there that he couldn't stand on his feet and do anything hardly. And and I had to do all the going to town and buying. I'd have to make two trips a week to town. I'd come down to here and I knew to go with me, you know, and we'd buy at the store. And, well, I don't know. I just, I thought, how long can I stand this? I was 73 then when we moved down here. When you're 73, you begin to feel your age a little bit. I was pretty strong though then. Mm -hmm. And uh, so we got the chance to, I passed here one day when I was building this house and I told Inez, I said, if that place ever sells, I'd like to have it when retired. Never thought of ever doing anything like it though. Well, she called me one morning and I was already thinking it was about time we'd done something else. 
And she said, Mama, they're going to sell that place, and you've got to be down here by noon. There's somebody else wants it, and she's going to hold it for you to noon. That is one morning. And I said, you'll be here in the morning early, and we'll go on over it before it says the noon. She said, let the other man have it for you to noon. Well, I laid awake all night long. I didn't sleep any that night. <laughs> Eat anything. And I made, trying to make my mind up, you know, mm. to leave there. I hate to leave over there. We was doing very well there, and I loved the people over there, all of them. Well, I come on, though, I decided the next morning, I told Mose, I says, we didn't help to nobody over there. They didn't have no idea we was going to do that. And I said, well, I think I'll just go on and buy that place. I said, we can't stay over here. We're getting older. And I said, and you ain't able to stay in the store all the time, and I'm not able to prop the town all the time. So I just uh, come on, and uh, Dora Henson bought from her. And me and her met in town, and she's just the nicest woman I ever seen, and we just made the trade right now and dug right out to Salisaw and got it recorded and everything. We fixed that whole thing up that day. Mo's never seen the house at all. He never even see it. And I said, well, I don't know whether you like it or not. I told him after we went back, I said, bought that house. <laughs> and I said, I don't know whether you like it or not. He says, hey, God darn, don't make no difference. And uh, so when he did come down here, though, he liked it fine. You know, I didn't know it was or not. He didn't think I have seen the way we done, but that there's a boy that stayed around the store a lot, Willard Steely. He was first and we told. And it was getting late in the evening and was going to close up. And I said, Willard, I've got something to tell you. <laughs> I said, me and Moses is going to leave over here. He says, leave, Prude. I said, yes. Oh, he says, we won't, we won't never stand for that. He just come in to take it on. And I don't know, but I, I thought he cried. He says, I never had anything as bad in my life. He says, this is where this is my hanging out place, and I won't have nowhere to go. He says, I, no, don't you all leave. I said, well, we've already got a place boat. He says, got a place boat. And, uh, and uh, from that, he told some of the others then. Well, they, there's a lot of them. Because some might have been some of them glad to sis leave, I don't know, but there's some of them made sis leave. Who One woman come up to my back door and she says, Prude, I don't know what in the world I'll do. You always tend to everything for me. I said, Somebody else will take my place. They'll, they'll take care of you. So then we sold the store the same one we sold the place to, the Waters. Later, they did. We didn't sell it to them. We first sold it to Helen's. Adrian Helen's. What, when was that? Huh? When was it that you found, that you sold it? 68. Yeah, 68. See, that was in February. We left there on the second day of March. We got our checks in on the first and the second and third, but we slept on the second. Oh, I didn't know whether Moe's would like <laughs> that. <laughs> I just come on both anyway. So when you sold the store, you just sold them everything that was in there, building everything, land? Or did you no, much stuff No, not, not at first. See, at first, when we left, while we uh, kind of rented it like, or give him a kind of a contract to Abram Hillams on the store. I forget just how we fixed it up, but the papers were fixed up of some kind to let him know, you know, we wasn't going to go back on him or nothing. And then he sold it to, uh, we sold the store out once before that. About 10 years before that, we sold it out once to Sam Montgomery. And Sam sold it to Junior Mer Jeremiah, and they all kept it for a year or so there. Then we decided we'd go back in it. They, sell them out and they just cleaned it all out and we just went back in. And I thought, oh, we ain't going to have much, we just have a little. We just kept on. We had good stock then. This but, was all before you bought the Yeah, that's before, that was before we decided to come down here yeah. or anything. And then we went back and stayed about 10 years before we decided to come down here. Where did you live during the time, during the time that you didn't own the store? We lived out there in the house. Uh, oh, you stayed in the, the house? Uh, we kept our house, you see, and we rented the store. So to them that was running. Then finally, when we decided to come down here while we left, uh, then when the, 
and so did George Waters, Sterling and all that. What was George the, Waters? Or not George Waters, Bill Waters. He's the one that sold the state of all of it. What was the business like? Did it, uh, did it vary between winter and summer? Well, it would a little bit. There's more in the summer and pop. You never seen the like oh, people yeah. coming on the creek. They'd just buy the fish. After we went back in the store the second time, they all come back and they told me to stick with death and I, I took it over that time. See, Moses had owned the store and he took the farm and I took the store. I was going to build me up some Social Security. Uh -huh. And Jack Green, Salso, he told me that put in my name and put the farm in Moses' name. Well, I draw a bigger check now than Moses does. The, the old man that was fixing his up all the time tried to get him down as low as he could, you know. And I told Jack to put it up on me. I said, I'll pay whatever. So I know I went up to pay the uh, income and all that. He says, well, you won't, you'll be mad this time. You won't want to pay it. I said, I don't care what it is. I'm, I'm going to go draw it pretty soon. So I draw about 10 or $15 more than most does. He draws his own. They, they wrote me a letter and told me that I couldn't draw on him because mine was more than his. I had to draw my own. <laughs> I draw mine, he draws his. <laughs> so Jack Green done me a pretty good favor there. He told me what to do. Who were uh, some of the people that came into the store a lot when you oh, first bought me. it? What kind of things were they doing? Well, they just... Uh, we had some benches in there for them to sit on, and we just all sat around. And we finally got us a window fan, you know, put in a water fan, and that kept us pretty cool. It was all burning up before that. <laughs> oh, we had some good times there. Just ask some of them old timers around there. I talked to Augusta Morton once in a while, Augusta Rogers. She used to be Augusta Matthews, a bitch called her name that. Y'all ever see them? Okay. Oh, she's one that her and her girls was always there. Robbie Nell and and Mary and uh, Kay. James Kay. Kay is over there, I think. And she's her daughter is her daughter. Augusta could tell you about Spark, couldn't she? Now, her daddy is the one that I had the post off now. Andy Rogers. Uh huh. And Rogers, her daddy. And he's the one that I had the, kept the post office for. Now, Augusta, she was just a little teenager girl then, and she was wanting to go off to school. Mm -hmm. Did she go to school? She went to Indian school. Oh, I think it was up here in Oklahoma. I forget what the name of it. Chilaco? Chilaco. Yeah, Augusta's one of her old standbys, and Ruth down there, Ruth Curry, she was too. Ruth was always there, her and only. Is she Ruth? Ruth and Curry then? Or? Uh, Ruth Curry now, used Jones? to be Ruth Lane. Mm -hmm. and she's always one of them, Augusta and her girls. and Oh, I don't know, there's just a bunch of them. There's, there was a duty woman that was always there too. Which what duty was that? Well, her name was... Uh, she married a man. Let's see what her name was. It's kind of corny. Leland George, they come down. Leon is always around. Luke and Levi. And how all their mothers, they think they have like racers and Jermars. Oh, they just bunch of lived around there. Lee King's folks used to always live there. They didn't come with this one. Earl was, Earl was there every day. Earl and Adrian. The Steelys. Well, I don't know. We just heard about it. Several of the Steelys. Who did the Steelys live? Did they live where well, they, 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 the house is empty, I think, where the father and mother lived that uh, would come down there. And then Jay Steely and Doris and them would live over there. They'd come. Is Jay Steely the, one of the sons of... Uh, 
Jay and Jay married Dora Shakenbush, and they live up there on the road, across from the old Steely House there, close to Guy's store, you know, they're talking about. That's where they live up in that part. And Adrian lived in a little house up above that store. Well, then Guy's house was back in behind him and his wife used to live in. They're pretty thick with seven. Clara Schrosner, she lived then on up the road, and then the Mackenzies, and then Cy and Aiken. They all come to the store, all of them I mentioned. Where did Clara Schrosner live? She lived uh, where they had that meeting, the water meeting the other day now. You know where that's at. That's right. where she lived, and she sold that place, and there's, I don't know who it is, Lewis. I seem like that. Yes. Perry, it seemed like yes. something like that. Yeah, they came from when they they came from Dallas. They did. Four or five years ago, I think. And they built a different house, haven't they, or something? Or it's the same house? They said it was the house was there when they moved. Now, I don't know if it was the same one that was there. Mackenzie's has always been there. They kind of destroyed it. Aunt Mary Rosemary used to be one of my old friends at the store. She's dead now. Where's she live? She lived up there for the Steely house. That was her home. Steely's birthday. Right that house as the road from the east of the Jay Steely lives on one side, and then his dad lived in that house over there that's got a hall in between. Yeah. Well, that's where my Aunt Mary, that was Aunt Mary Rosemary house. That'd be right across the corner from the Mill store. Mm hmm. That's where it's at. She had a boy named Julius Roasting here. Where is he today? He went to, on an Indian reservation in uh, Mexico or something. And anyhow, she's dead. He died. He married a girl with uh, Jay I'm getting so I'm so forgetful on names. Did you see the little plaque counter they give Mose for about the mound? That little blue star of a thing a hanging on the John. Get it look at. They sent that to him here not too awful long ago. There's another historic site that they're interested in, you know, doing something about. And that's at Sequoia Salt Works. Have you ever? Yeah. yeah have you heard stories of? Uh, um, you know, wasn't there a development back then in the 30s? Remember the 30s when somebody was trying to develop a um, mineral springs kind of a resort area up there? Was that when, when you were in that? It seems like I heard something about that, but not too much about it. Uh, Are they thinking about doing something about that? They're yeah, thinking, yeah. I was wondering if you had heard, uh, you know, about people who lived up there or other kinds of activities in that same valley. No, I don't guess I had. I don't remember. A lot of times I can think on something and remember something, but I, I don't remember it. Mm -hmm. Do you remember people, you know, uh, like for something to do when they go up there and uh, bathe themselves or when they get the crystals out of the water? Or? Oh, you mean up above an eye cut there? Yeah. Oh, yes, I've heard a lot about that. I was thinking you was talking about somewhere else. Yeah, that. That's that springs up there. Uh, yeah, they'd go up there and, yeah, they used to go up there all the time. This went from down here up there and bathe in that water. Uh -huh. What does the historical people think about that? Well, they're just, uh, you know, it's associated with the Sequoia home, and so they're, you know, wanting to know as much historical information about it as possible. And so, uh, yeah, I've been up there. I, I was kind of studying about what you're talking about. Yes, I've been up there for them. Salt springs. Mm -hmm. well, when you first went up there, could you see anything that, that you know, may, Sequoia well, may have used? To, I, I to don't remember noticing anything much. Or it's just that water. Stinking springs, I call it. Yeah. Well, is there, is, is there a difference?
Had you ever heard of anything like that? Well, that's what was old Aunt Nancy's, too. Uh -huh. But he mentioned to me that that was a stage stop. Well, now, he shared his grandpa Branson. He shared that, got that to the, his mother's side of the thing, you know. And there's where he lived, Mr. Branson, his grandpa lived there a long time. <coughs> he owned that place that we owned there, Mr. Branson owned that once. <coughs> then he sold it to a fellow by the name of King, Bob King. I mean, he lived there, not the place that we own. He rented it, but he lived there in that house, that's the Homer Smith house. In the Homer now, Smith yeah, house? Yeah, now that's where Mr. Branson lived. Or the little house north of Homer Smith's place? No, he lived in the Homer Smith house, Mr. Branson did. Yeah. And uh, we, he lived there, and we used to go there to ball games. And he had a store there, where I told you that store was at down there, across from... Across the road from Homer yeah, Smith's right place. There. Well, he had Mr. Branson in the store there one time. That's Bob's grandpa on his mother's side. So you think Great grandpa. Who built that house originally? Mr. Branson. Mr. Branson. I'd say Mr. Branson built it. And probably the store, too. Uh, and what about the house north of the Holman Smith place? Well, I don't know about that one. He might have, been, might have been built by somebody else. Mm -hmm. Might have been built by Homer Smith. I don't know about it, but Mr. Branson was there first. And then when he lived there, why, Bob King is the one I believe he sold out to. Then he sold Homer Smith. I think that's where that was. Mm -hmm. Well, do you recall a stage trail going anywhere near that area? I don't, I don't recall that because, I, you see, I didn't hear that story. Now, no. Bob's got that to his mother's side of the family. Mm -hmm. Well, that's where her grandpa lives long. No, I'm mistaken. I won't say that's where he lived. He lived. Yeah, I, I forgot. Uh, I kind of believe that he lived at that time up there in Arthur Baker House. See, that was Mr. Branson lived there, too. I kind of got that mixed up, so I wouldn't say the truth on that. But he died where Mr. Roth Baker is. That was Branson home. And that's where Branson died? Mm -hmm. But he had the store there. And I was it strikes me, I wouldn't know, Katie, I would know. It strikes me that he lived across the road though there at that time and moved this other place later. But I ain't right sure about it. Mm -hmm. Was he operating the cotton gym? Is that the one, Branson? Oh, he had the store. I don't know whether he, he might have operated that cotton gin, too. Now, Bob Mike could tell you that. He's got that through Katie Alva. Her Claude would know. Mm -hmm. she, Katie's his wife. Uh, she was uh, Mr. Branson's her grandpa. And he was sure he had a at one time. And I think my grandpa Allison was at one time. We find that in the record. It seems like if the sheriff died or got killed or something, he took his place for a while, Grandpa Allison. That's in the record. I don't think we talked about uh, Allison being a captain, right? Captain Allison. Yeah, I think we talked that. We just never did know much about him. You know, the records all got burned up. Our house burned. Well, was he a captain in the Civil War? Mm hmm but we can't imagine hardly how come him here what did he, unless it, he, the army brought him here or something we didn't know how come him here I mean, it's, 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 it's.